Okay, I think we're uh, we're ready to go here, uh, and uh, we're going to use our um, our our what do you call it our um, <laughs> uh, our Zoom here to do it. Here's Len and Barb. Here's Len. He always joins us. Let's see if he's joining now. There we go. There we go. And uh, we're recording, and everything's going good. Hello, Len. Uh, by the way, I'm Alex Bennett. In case you Oh, to know. Uh, I'm on the wrong call then. What? Then I'm on the wrong call. Oh, really? <laughs> You're trying to call somebody else, huh? Yeah. <laughs> anyway, let's see how many people join us today. That will yeah. depend on whether we go the full hour or cut out at 15 minutes or something. But who knows? I, I, I don't know if you remember um, a couple of weeks ago, I had mentioned to you that I was in a film. Um, called Death Blood Four, and that there was no one, two, and three. Do you remember that? <laughs> Boy, was that? Oh, oh I, I'm, I'm hearing the air conditioning. That's what I'm hearing. You were in what again? A, a movie called Death Blood Four, yeah. and that there was no one, two, and three. <laughs> <laughs> yes. Well, it uh, shameless plug time. It actually came out on Amazon Prime on Friday. What's it called again? Death blood four death blood four okay death well death. i'll have to i'll have to check I, that i would love for you to watch it wait a minute uh, somebody's trying to call me who is this wait a minute hold on a second all right i'm not going to hello <laughs> hello no well, they they hung up it, it, it's it's usually one of those you know yeah. robo calls yeah yeah so yeah i, I would love if I would love if you would watch it. That would make me my day. Death, um, it's death Blood 4? Death as in, you know, death, D-E-A-T-H, Death Blood 4. Yeah. Um, it's, you know, it's an homage to, you know, the 70s schlocky, uh, you know, horror movies. It's yeah. not all that gory or anything, but um, it was my first acting job, and I I think it came out pretty good. They, they made it for about $3,000. Well, I, 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 I want to I see it. Yeah, it's very well done. The guys who did it were amazing. We're being joined by Robert Natali. You've never called us before, Robert, have you? Are you there, Robert? Can you hear us? Oh, he doesn't. Now he's connecting his own. Oh, there you go. Can you hear us now? He's connecting to audio. <laughs> this is the most difficult part for people. There we go. He's connect. Can you hear us? Yes. Okay, you can hear us. You never called us before, have you? No, Alex. I'm a fan of yours since the WMCA days. Oh, and I, Jesus. Listen, I listen to the ramble religiously every morning after because my wife can't stay up that late. Really? <laughs> you so listen to I'm the audio version or you watch the video version? Yes, I do. Yes, we do. <laughs> Each and every morning. First. No, I mean, which one do you listen to, the audio oh. or the video? Uh, the video, actually. The video. Okay. Yes. You can put it up on your TV set if you want. Yes, we do. Yeah. <laughs> Great. Yeah. yeah. We and we spend uh, we spend first thing in the morning shouting at Phil. At Phil. Oh God. Yes. Yes. That, that, that must drive you crazy. It even drives probably would drive. Do you, do you ever listen to the ramble, Len? Yeah. Sure. Yeah. So you've heard Phil. Oh yeah. Yeah. I'm sure you're a conservative, right? You're you're Republican. Well, <laughs> I was staunch until the last four, three and a half years. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Then you, well, you know something, I'll tell you, what I, what I figured out here is that you can be a conservative and not like Trump because Trump isn't a conservative. He's a corporatist. Mm. You know, there's no you conservatism. Know, I believe in a lot of the fiscal, you're right. Yeah, no, you're absolutely right. That's yeah. a good point. Yeah. But you believe in the fiscal stuff is what you're I believe saying. in the fiscal stuff where I don't believe in the abortion stuff. Uh, you know, I'm, I'm more liberal in that regard. And, yeah. and but, um, you know, fiscally and that sort of stuff. Yeah, oh, I would say yes. Why do you have to identify? My question is why you even have to identify yourself as anything in particular? Well, and that's <laughs> what my wife's argument is. She says, you know, I'm voting for the person that, that you know, that, that it has my beliefs. I don't care if it says R or D next to it. And yeah, that's right. Exactly. Exactly. Um, 
But, <laughs> but we, we've created such a uh, d divided society here that we have a tendency to just want to categorize everybody as either left or right or Republican or Democrat or, you know, whereas you're not allowed to be a free thinker and to say, hey, this guy doesn't look good to me. This guy does. Mm -hmm. you know. And and with yeah. all due respect, I think that's why I shout at the TV where it comes to Phil. Um, Phil seems like the kind of guy I'd like to have a beer with, but in Phil's world, everything is binary choice. You know, you're either a protester or you're against the police. You know, there's a lot of middle ground and he never seems to see it that way. Yeah. He always seems th sees things in black or white. You're this side or that side. And life's never that easy, you know? Yeah. I know. It, it, life is... A, it, 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 is a series of inconsistencies. Yeah. You know, I can't, I, I, you know, I've got to say that on certain things, I probably, I'm, I consider myself very much a lefty, okay? But there are a few right-wing opinions I've had, you know? Me too. You know, so, so I mean, you, you shouldn't be so dogmatic that you say, I'm this or I'm that, you know? Len is, is, was a Republican, but he can't, he's not now because of Trump. Well, he probably still should be a Republican, still should be a conservative, and Trump shouldn't make a difference to that because Trump falls into neither of those categories. That's, abs that's absolutely right. I mean, I still consider myself that. Um, yeah. Will I vote for Donald Trump this year? Absolutely not. There, <laughs> you know, it, it, it's some, uh, did you see this interview that, uh, that uh, Chris Wallace did? Yes. From, Yes. Um, yeah. God, do I, did I feel sorry for Chris Wallace? Me too. I mean, it, he, he couldn't get a straight answer out of the guy. And any time that he started to even ask him a hard question, he'd start diverting it off into various different areas. Oh, look who we have here, Tony. I'm walking from the pet store. It's freaking hot out. <laughs> yeah, it's 90. What is it right now? It's 94 degrees out there, Tony. I know, and the heat index is all they said it is. It's like a it must be It must be terrific wearing a mask and having, I yeah. I got my tail bangers. They got them on sale for the dog. Tail bangers? Uh, they're peanut butter filled. They, instead of chewing the couch or wood, they chew those things. Oh, okay. Uh, Unless they're on the couch, and then they can chew the couch and the thing at the same time. There you go. Yeah. yeah. Hey, I was going to ask you, Alex, did you see that interview with Chris Wallace? Well, that's what we're talking about here. Oh, okay. Yeah. Uh, it was not, uh, uh, it was, I mean, I felt sorry, as I say, I felt sorry for Chris Wallace because he couldn't get a straight answer out of the guy, you know? I applaud Chris Wallace because at least it wasn't a softball interview. No. You know, at least he tried. You know, whereas others just throw, you know, puffball after puffball. And Trump kept saying, here, hand me those facts and figures. When they <laughs> handed it to him, did you see how big the printing was on it? <laughs> yeah. It was, yeah. yeah. You know, uh, and, and he, he tried to say that, uh, oh, well, they have had many more deaths in other countries, you know. Well, yeah, that's it, not true. Well, it, it doesn't matter. We've had 140,000 in this country. Forget about the other countries. Well, you know, we do the most testing of anybody, and uh, we, uh, we don't have as many people who came down with COVID. Uh, what you go by is the percentage in the test. In other words, what's the percent of people that were seen to have COVID? Uh, you don't come down with a flat number, but a percentage. And as percentages go, England's like, I don't know, 0.9% right now. Science is like one point something. Where are 20% of all these tests being done come out positive? You know, but he's, he's in a state of denial and he will only accept figures that are handed to him in big press that, that go along with how he feels the world is and his vision in it. Terrible. Yeah, he he looked bad. Well, I mean, he was sweating like a pig because yeah. he decided he wanted to do the interview outdoors. 
And it was like it is right now with you walking there. I know. You know, I'm going to cut you short because I'm going to go into the deli for my mom. So I'm going to have to get potato salad. Pick yeah. yourself a sandwich. I should. He's got good food, this guy. And, and pick, I'm barbecuing for him. Oh, really? I mean, yeah. I barbecued ribs last night. Oh, that's my brother and me got going. I'm going to have chicken. I, uh, chicken I do the best. Oh. I mean, I you do do the good idea. Huh? You do them good out here. That's what Chef he said. You yeah. like to, you do the sauce offer, right? Oh. The only All right, thing. I'll let you go, Alex. I'll talk okay. to you later. Okay, see you later, Tony. I'm, That's Tony uh, Magno, ladies and gentlemen. I'll see you later. From his iPod. Uh, and uh, he's uh, he's out there. Um, let, me, let me just get rid of his picture here. Let me see here. Um uh, Stop video? No, I don't. I don't want to stop his video. What do I want to do? I want to. Um, uh, I want to remove him. There we go. Move it. Yeah. Uh, you want to move? Yes. Okay. Go. Now it's not going away. Hmm. No. no. <laughs> well, I hit remove for crying out loud. Oh, there we go. Now I go remove. Okay. <laughs> and nothing. Okay. Well. Everybody will have to look at Tony Magno's frozen face there for a while. <laughs> Let's see here. Stop video. Oh, there we go. He finally got finally lost him. Uh, if any of you want to call, by the way, uh, just go to my Facebook page and I have a link there you can use and it'll just put you right on here. Or uh, go over to gabnet.net and down at the bottom of the page on the right hand side it says uh, join with Zoom and you just click on that. You don't have to have Zoom on your machine or anything. It's wonderful. It'll just put you here and then we'll talk with you. Um, so funny, we, you know, in the 60s or whatever, the whole big thing was we're going to have a telephone with a picture on it. You know, that was a big deal. And now, here, look at us sitting here on conference calls across the country, you know, being able to do it. Yeah. And everybody's starting to hate it. It's like, oh, God, again? <laughs> you know? Well, you know, when I started uh, doing uh, GabNet, the big thing we had was that we did things called citizen panels, which were more than one person at a time, all talking and conversing with each other. Well, we've mm -hmm. been doing that for the five years that GabNet's been in, in uh in, in business and business, you know, made a penny <laughs> off of business. Um, but we did that, and um, it it was um, uh, it was unusual. But it isn't unusual anymore. Right? No. You know, everybody else has jumped on the bandwagon. I mean, we were the first ones to do it. We, yep. we were that original with it. But now everybody does it. So I'm wondering if I should keep doing it or not. You know. <laughs> Well, I hope so. Yeah. I hope so too. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Um, but yeah, um, I told I, you. I, just this being indoors has gotten to me. I'm like, every day I'm just tired. I'm woozy. And I think it's because I just haven't been out. And if I go, I'm not going out today. It's going to be 94, 95, 96 yeah. degrees. Right. Is it humid too? Yes. Yes. Of course it is. The the <laughs> expected uh, feel like weather, whatever, 104 degrees. Yeah, lovely. Yeah. <laughs> Back on top of the COVID. Now, I'd like to go out and take a walk so I don't get squirrely, so I maybe have a little bit of, you know, uh, uh, get up and go. But I can't because if I go out there, it's uh, I'm going to, at my age, I'm going to die from the fucking heat, you know. <laughs> I was worried about COVID getting me. <laughs> Speaking yeah, of which, said. I, you, right. where, where, are you, where do you live, Robert? Um, I'm in a town in New Jersey called Skillman, which is a mile from Princeton University. Oh. I spent all my life, though, in Bergen and Hudson County in New Jersey in the New York sphere of influence. Yeah. So I think of myself as a, a New Yorker. Well, I think everybody in Connecticut in uh, yeah. New Jersey, all feel they're kind of we're we're all the same state actually. Yeah, all our all my influences are New York City. You know the yeah. teams I root for, the places I love to eat, that sort of thing is all about New York. Yeah, but I, I, was, uh, I was born on 64th Street in Brooklyn, so I'm part of the club. I guess. There you yeah. Go. <laughs> okay. No, you are. You're you're definitely part of it. If you were born in Brooklyn, you're definitely part of the club. <laughs> right. No matter where you moved, you moved out I to California, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. 
I could have I could have been one of those guys. I could have been one of those guys on the street corner going, "Hey, how you doing?" Yeah, <laughs> that's right. Yeah, but I um um, what's getting us a little worried is that there are some people in New York who are not taking this thing seriously. Yes, and they're congregating. They had a big congregation in Astoria, Queens. Yes. When I saw the pictures of it, I thought I was going to get COVID just watching it. <laughs> you know. Uh, I mean, just sheer stupidity and selfishness. Yes. You know, because... Last week, last Monday, you said you had zero the day before. What are you guys at now? Well, that was zero in New York City. New York right. State was something like five or six. We we had, I think, yesterday or something, it was eight. It goes between eight and 10 and 13 and then back down to five. And it's it's in that range, you know? Yeah. And, and the governor said, he's been told, don't ever expect it to go to zero. Because uh, it, it's just that there are too many comorbidities involved in this. That if somebody just gets it and has a real bad comorbidity, he'll probably die of it. Yep. All right. So that you can't really expect 100, you can't expect to go to zero. But it would be nice if one day it did, and it did in New York City. Right but we still had an upstate factor. And there's some places upstate that are having problems. Yeah. Um, basically because somebody came from like South Carolina to a birthday party and next thing you know, everybody's got. Right. Some of the scientists this weekend and their projections were awfully, awfully frightening. People talking about 50% of the population at some point being infected and well, the, the, many of the million deaths. The, the prognosis for New York City when we first had this problem was uh, definitely um, uh, dour. Yeah. Uh, and as dour as some of those predictions. But there's some way you can change those predictions. Yeah. And that's by bending the curve, by everybody yeah. getting together and wearing a mask and social distancing and doing all the things you got to do and washing your hands and those things. So we all did that in New York and we took that dour prediction and completely reversed it to where the amount of deaths were less than they predicted they were going to be. Uh, where we were going to be now is different than where they were projecting because projections are exactly that. They're taking what's happening right now and then they're extrapolating it into the future. You can change those predictions. Absolutely. You know. Absolutely. That's the nature of statistics. You adjust as new factors come into play. Right. You know, you adjust as new information is known. It's this, I mean, it would be the same as asking someone to predict the weather six months from now. That changes as you get closer to the event. You yeah, know, you could say, oh, it's going to be like this then, maybe based on what the weather is now. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Uh, so it's kind of sad you know, that people around the country, well, to begin with, it's sad these governors decided to get in a lockstep with the president <clears throat> and march this to Armageddon. Yeah. Uh, and, and now uh, some of them are t changing around. I think the governor of Texas finally was, uh, said he was kind of bothered by, um, by Trump and the way he's been handling this and right. that he was kind of going along with Trump and maybe that was the wrong way to go, you know, in the fast reopening of stuff. Because Trump wanted the economy reopened immediately so he would look good, so business numbers would go up. Sure. And instead, it's coming back to bite him in the ass because when we get some new numbers, we're going to find more people out of work. We're going to find more businesses closed down. We're going to find the economy taking a nosedive. And that's all because he was too, he wants the schools back, you know. Uh, and I'm not, but he says he's not going to fund any schools that reopen, don't reopen. Right. Well, to begin with, the government only funds 8%. Yeah. Okay. It's mostly local. And secondly, the 8% is basically for kids who are, have, have uh, uh, physical problems, physical disabilities, yes. and, and stuff like that, you right. know, and for special learning, so on and so forth. So really, you're hurting the wrong part of the population by saying you're Precisely. not going to, you know, you're not going to, 
take care of it. There's a study that came out this morning from South Korea, which I, I don't know the ins and outs of it, but it was talking about the fact that they've determined that youngsters, while they don't tend to get sick, are carriers, like are really strong carriers, and therefore will get their family members ill. They say kids under nine, I think, are not particularly big carriers, but over nine, they are. Yeah. And those are the ones we're sending back to school, too. Yeah. Now, what they do is they don't come home and, you know, maybe they do have a sniffle, like the president said. I love the way he did yeah. <laughs> minimized it by saying, hey, you just get a sniffle. Okay. Yeah. But they may come back with a sniffle, but that sniffle... Uh, is going to infect their parents, their grandparents, any old person they come into contact with, and could kill them. Yes. So that while those kids are not going to probably die of it, and I agree with the president, yeah, I'm sure there weren't very many deaths in that age group, but how many of that age group gave it to someone else who did die? Right. And that's the question. And seeing it, seeing schools only as a as a place for students is foolish because you have teachers of all different ages. You've got you know staff of other kinds, non instructional staff, and those people could be extremely vulnerable. And no yeah. consideration is being given to that. We don't care about the teachers. No, we don't. Yeah, and um, you know, I would think that Trump would care about all of this because. When it comes to comorbidities, he's a petri dish. Yeah, you know, yeah. I mean, yeah. look at—he's fat enough that he will be on a—he will be on a respirator if he. Yeah, can, you know, we've uh, been rooting. Oh, I, I'm sorry. Did I say that? You've been what? <laughs> we've been rooting for that, but oh, I'm sorry. <laughs> did, did I say that? That's terrible. Well, then we get pants. Yeah, no, you're right. What's the what's you, the difference? You, what, you know? There's a big difference. I think Pence is even worse than, than yeah, Trump. Exactly. Trump, is just, <laughs> Trump is just stupid. Pence is like a religious zealot. Yeah, you know, he'll make us pray to have it go away. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> but um, um, you know, you have Trump with all these comorbidities. You would think he would be wanting to do something about the virus. Mm -hmm. uh, Except he gets to keep keep people away and get tested every five minutes, you know. Right. Um, he you know, he's had that stick up his nose more than I did in the set in, in, the, in, the, in the in the eighties with cocaine, you know. Um, but he um, uh, the other reason is is that his grandfather died of the Spanish flu. Yes. Oh, that was interesting to learn. Yeah. Uh, he died of the Spanish flu, which, um, you know, I would think you would be very sensitive to all of this. But, you know, this is, this, this is a selfish man. And he's playing to a very selfish yeah. audience who goes, it's my right not to wear a mask. No, it isn't, because yeah. it, you're harming the public by not wearing a mask. You know, and I suppose it's my right to get loaded and go out and drive a car. Yeah. You know, I, I, I don't understand why there isn't an equivalency there. You know, it, everybody realizes yeah. that that would be foolish. And not everybody who, who drives a car and uh, goes out and has an accident. OK. Um, uh, 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 dies. But the right. person he hits, but the person he hits does. Yes. You know, exactly. there's your analogy. Yeah. I don't know. I, I don't get it. You know, I, I just, and I don't get these kids here in New York now and uh, who are doing this, this uh, going out and, you know, partying in the streets and, and in, uh, creating an infection that they don't care. They don't care because this is all caring about the whole thing about wearing a mask is you're not wearing it for you. It doesn't protect you. It protects someone else. Yes. And he wears a mask to protect you. And so this is a case of, of people getting together and caring for each other. Right. And when I see somebody not wearing a mask, I go, you son of a bitch. Do you have so little, you know, opinion of, uh, of, of, of the people out there that, uh, that, you, that you don't care if you wear a mask or not? Do you really care that you might be killing somebody else? 
I saw somebody on the street the other day and he, he was begging for money. And I said, I'm not giving you money. You're not wearing a mask. And his reply from this guy who didn't look very well to begin with was, I don't need to. Wow. Huh? You don't okay. need to? I guess he's immune. Yeah, I guess. I'd, I'd like to know that immunity. I don't yeah, like know too. where they got it. Listen, they're finding out people who have the, uh, that have had it aren't necessarily immune from getting it again. We've had cases about people getting it again. Mm -hmm. You know, so uh, it's, um, you know, who knows? It's, it's vodka's, vodka's huh? working pretty well for me. Vodka's vodka. working? Yeah, yeah well, that's work working very well. Yeah, yeah, yeah. As well it should. <laughs> Somebody on Facebook um, made the made the comment that you um, you wear pants so that if you piss, <laughs> you won't get the guy across from you wet. Hmm. And he wears pants so that if he pisses, he gets <laughs> wet, but you don't. And that that works for me. Like I, I kind of understood it that way. I think that makes a lot of sense to me. Yeah. 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 <laughs> ah, boy. People are me. Here's the thing, guys. I, when this first came about in March and we really became aware of it, what scared the bejesus out of me was that here was an opportunity for Trump to really gain points with the nation's voters by trying his best to unify the nation, making this a cause celeb and almost like a wartime stance. And I thought his approval rating would go up through the roof, much like Bush had that surge after 9-11. And yet he was too foolish to grab that opportunity. That's the part that I guess in a no, way- I think he actually did, thought that he wasn't playing to his base. Yeah. Yeah, and, and he didn't realize that he would play to his base no matter what he did. Right. That they would be with him even if he said wear a mask. Yeah. You know, they weren't anti-mask people. But he right. took stands he thought was playing to that group rather than saying, hey, I can educate this group. Right. You know, and I can still have everybody go, what a good guy I am. But you see, I don't think Trump's that bright. I don't think he's that smart or, or knows that much about it's politics. It's all about his reelection. He just, you know, he's, he, if he's wishing it away so that it could go away and the economy could come back and he could be the savior. Well, supposedly you know? he thought that wearing a mask was an affront to him. It's all about him. Yeah. It's always about him. You know, and I, I don't understand that. That doesn't make a hell of a lot of sense to me. You know? Yeah, uh, and and if he truly wants to get reelected, he would have done something about this. It's too late for him to do it now, but he is responsible for at least of the deaths out there. We can put at his doorstep at least forty thousand of those deaths were because of him, because mm. he was warned by Bricks and everybody else that if you don't tell people to wear masks, uh, we're going to see forty thousand more deaths than we have to, and we have. I I have a question for you. I mean, the, the prospect of him being reelected is, is low, and it would be the worst four years of any of our lives. But what do you think about November 4th through January 20th, when he has now, you know, been, say, let's say he's been um, replaced by Biden. He's got three months there to do his own, whatever he wants to do, with virtually no consequences, if you will. That scares the holy crap out of me. Me too. Well, it's not going to get anything he wants to pass isn't going to get through Congress because they're going to go, you're a lame duck, and even the Republicans will say it. We can't do anything about it. But he can't I'm, sign those stupid executive orders, which can be reversed by the next president by simply true. writing another executive order. And I'm worried more about I think will come as well. Go ahead, ben, I'm sorry. What? So I just said the pardons, I think, will come fast and furious as well. Yeah. I have a theory that he's going to pardon Hitler. <laughs> <laughs> well, there were well, good he, people he, on he that did side. Pardon you know, Roger Stone, good. so there's a very small jump between <laughs> Hitler and Roger Stone. Yeah, yeah. I'm more worried about him creating an international incident of some sort, thereby trying to cement the need for him to stay in power until this is resolved. So he'll almost create his own fire 
I'm worried. He, I'm worried that he, it out. He, he's already setting it up. But every speech he gives, everything he talks you. about, he keeps saying the 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 uh, mail-in votes are going to corrupt the uh, the uh, uh, yeah. corrupt it for me. Right. And uh, so he's setting it up to then go. Well, I am not getting out of here because this was an illegal election. Yes. Okay. And as Nancy Pelosi said today, I can't believe she used this term. She said, uh, if Biden gets elected, I don't care what we have to do. If we have to fumigate him out of the yeah, White House. Right. <laughs> that was funny. <laughs> She's got the balls of a safe cracker, that woman. She yeah. really does. Yeah. <laughs> but, uh, fumigate him. Uh, uh, and that's pretty well the way, best way to describe it, you know. Yeah. But the damage that he's done as president, we won't be able to undo for the next 20, 25 years. You know, yeah, the world right. doesn't think the same of us. You know, oh God, no, oh no, 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 no. James we're, we're Carville, laughing. James Carville has another theory altogether that as it gets closer to the election and he sees that there's an outstanding chance that he's about to take a beating, that he may pull out for some bogus reason like ill health or mm -hmm. some other bullshit because I can't imagine a man with his ego standing in to take a beating, if indeed right. that works out. Yep. So Carville actually said that there's just as good a chance that he pulls out as there is that he wins. I know Carville's a democratic strategist and that's what he's hoping for, but he's been around the block. Uh, well, Ron, there's, well, there's always that possibility, but then that leaves them with, uh, with Pence who I don't think could win it at all. Not that Trump would give a shit, though. You know, yeah, he, right. at that point, he wouldn't care who was running for the Republicans. He's not really even a Republican, as you pointed out earlier. It's true. Yeah, yeah. Well, he was a Democrat for years. I mean, he oh, was sure. a Hillary oh, absolutely. And, yeah. and Clinton and all that stuff. I actually thought he joined the race to make sure Hillary won, to be honest with you. Yeah. Back when he first started, I thought, oh, okay. You know, and then he and then he opened his mouth. Hi, Steve Bender. Hello. Yeah. He's not really even a Republican, as you pointed out earlier. Oh, turn no. turn off your audio, Steve. Your. Well, he was a Democrat for years. I mean, he oh, was sure. a Hillary, oh, absolutely. And yeah. Clinton and all that stuff. I actually thought he joined the race. Yeah. Tur make turn off your Facebook, Steve. No, I got it. <laughs> okay, good. good. Uh, what we what, what, let's see here. Where were we? I couldn't remember where we were because I was hearing you say stuff you had already said before, and I wonder if you just said it now. Sorry about that. <laughs> no, I mean, uh, there's a, there's every chance that he's going to use uh, the uh, the mail in voting as his excuse why he is not going to leave until they figure that out, and then we're going to have to go in with federal troops and take his furniture and put it out on the lawn. That's is, why it's is, important not just is, to beat him, but to crush him. Like, I, you know, like, I think it's so important that he take a sound beating. I think that's what we all are hoping for. Yeah, this way there's no, you know, like there's not even bullshit that he can make up yeah. about, you know, phony ballots and this and that. It's just get out of here. I, I, agree, I agree totally, but I don't really like that standard. I mean, winning by one vote should be enough. Should be enough, right? You're absolutely right, Steve. And this idea that we have to have a landslide. I mean, we, I think we are right. We do. But we just have to beat the motherfucker. Get well, you know, something, <laughs> uh, Chris Wallace said something very subtly yesterday uh, when he said, well, you know, he said, uh, uh, you know, I have enough people who are, are enthusiastic about me to win, you know, my, my people are enthusiastic. And then he said, yeah, but there are just as many people enthusiastic to see you not there. Right. Right. And that's true this time. Last time people went, eh, Trump, I don't know, I see him on TV, uh, he, he's the guy that goes, you're fired, you know, blah, 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 but why not? You know, couldn't hurt, I think it's was probably shot. what they said to themselves. And now those people are not going to vote for him again. They suddenly have gotten the message that, you know what you need? You need an old line politician in there who knows how to run the fucking country. Yes. And no matter how uninspirational Biden might be, he's not hated the way that Hillary was. Hated. Well, it's like, I don't like 
Biden. I would, he's not my idea of who I'd like to see as president, but there's a factor here that's very important. He's not Trump. Yes. <laughs> you know. Do you know, well, do you remember the Firesign Theater? Um, yeah. They ran the candidate, George Papoon, in 72, and the slogan was not insane. Yeah, right. That, <laughs> I think that should be Biden's ad campaign. Who was yeah. the one who was doing something like that, and it was, I am not a crook? Yeah, I am. Yeah. <laughs> but, you know, I mean, it, it's, it's, uh, it's a sad thing that that, 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 you know, I don't want to have to vote for Biden. I wouldn't vote for him in, under most circumstances. I think he's okay. He's a nice guy, all of that. But, I mean, I'll tell you the guy who's got to be president of this country. You're going to say Biden. I know who he's going to say. Promo, right? Yeah. Steve, you I vote him. yes. He saved my fucking life. I vote <laughs> yes. Yeah. I mean, he didn't just put money in my pocket. He put oxygen in my lungs. Yes. <laughs> you know? And uh, that, that's, uh, that's pretty good. Uh, I'm not a big Biden fan either, but I think a lot of times it's a little like coaches um, in sports where you have a taskmaster and invariably when he gets fired, he gets replaced by a player's coach, you know, one that's kind of buddy-buddy. And then mm -hmm. he gets fired and they need somebody to come in and crack the whip. It's like a pendulum. And I think Joe might be the right guy for this moment because he's the least dramatic. You know, he's everybody's uncle in a way. And so there'll be a sort of air of a lack of drama. And so in that sense, I think he might be in a way what the country needs. He'll surround wonder, himself. Yeah, hold him. on a second. I just want to see this. Uh, are you there, Candace? You don't have a microphone on and you know your picture isn't showing. So uh, I'm going to remove you, and you can call back if you know how to get in, okay? All right? And as quick. you said, he's not going to surround himself with toady idiots, right? He'll exactly. surround himself with competent people. Yeah. Well, I mean, he, but that's, he's, been, he's been vice president. He knows what it takes. Yes. He knows that it's a collaborative effort and that, you know, that you, you bring people in. There are areas you don't have expertise. You know, you may not be an expert on the economy, so you get some guy who's an expert on the economy, and then you listen to him. That's you know, or you're you're not good. You're not a doctor. You don't know about the coronavirus, but you bring in people who do, and you listen to them. That's what it, it's a very simple process. Well, one know. of the reasons one of the reasons Trump got in was because they were voting against Hillary, yeah. and I think that's exactly why Biden is going to do well because they're going to be voting against Trump. I agree. Yeah. Wouldn't it be nice if we had an election where we voted for somebody we wanted? Well, we did with right? Obama. We, we, uh, you know, well, I wasn't that crazy about getting Obama in the beginning because I felt he was inexperienced, that he'd only mm -hmm. had two years in the Senate before he decided to run for, for president. Mm -hmm. And, you know, I think it takes a little more experience. And he, in the first term, eh, he was so-so. Second term, he had learned the job, you know? And by the end of the second term, he was a damn good president, mm -hmm. you know. Uh, but, uh, um, you know, I had my doubts about, about Obama, but there was one thing I liked about Obama. He was charming. <laughs> yeah, you know, yeah. he was intelligent. Yep. You know, he had a smart wife. You know, I look, he, he raised two great kids. I look at that to decide what he's really like, right. you know. As you should. I mean, I, you know, I don't love everything about Obama, but you look at him, you look at his family, you listen to him. Here's a human being with a yeah. soul. If yeah. he could have done more good, I fully believe he would have done more good if he well, wasn't blocked every step of the let way. Let me get back to Cuomo for a second. We've seen how he's handled New York. Are you people familiar with you are in New Jersey? How about you, Len? Are you, have you been paying attention I mean, to Cuomo? We see, we see him on TV, you know, yeah. uh, doing his updates. So, yeah, I, I know. Yeah. This is a guy who probably knew nothing about the science of COVID, but he taught himself. He listened to other people and he learned from that. And he made decisions which, which quite frankly, are a miracle here in New York. If you look at how that curve, we didn't even, we didn't even plateau. We, as soon as we hit the top, started going down. And, uh, this is a guy who, if he were president right now, we wouldn't have the problem we have. He, he listens to his experts. Huh? What were you saying, Len? I said he listens to his experts, 
where Trump does not. Yeah, yeah. And uh, I, and plus the speeches he gives, the, the press conferences he gives are uplifting, you yeah. know? Uh, he talks about, you know, New York is tough, it's strong, it's loving, it's whatever. And he gives you reasons to want to accomplish bringing this whole curve down to where it is now. And that's how we succeeded. I mean, look at New York City. We were the most infected city in the United States, and now we're the least. Mm -hmm. I mean, and then you go to these places like Texas where you get that idiot governor out there, and, you know, <laughs> Florida where you got a complete moron, and then in, in, uh, in Georgia, you've got the governor who's suing, suing the mayor of Atlanta. Unbelievable. <laughs> You know, I mean, uh, and by the, about? by the way, that mayor of Atlanta, I think, would be the perfect running mate for okay, the governor office. suing the mayor for a mask mandate. Is that just yeah. I am go I am with Trump? Yeah, yeah. No matter what, I'm going down with this ship. Going down with the ship. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> and and here, Cuomo gave them the playbook. You know, still to this minute, he's given them the playbook on how this can work. And it frustrates the living hell out of him that, you know, more people in our nation didn't take what he had learned. Well, he was in Savannah, Georgia today um, to, to coach them on how to handle the situation. He brought PPE with him mm. and he brought uh, a, a game plan for testing mm -hmm. and then phased, uh, phasing people in and everything just to one mayor of one city. But he, he had a thing where he said a lot of states have jumped in to help us. Something like 30,000 healthcare professionals came into New York to help. And he said the other states helped us when we were down. Now we're going to help other states when they're down. He sent uh, I don't know how many vials of Visivir to uh, Florida. Yeah. You know, um, And so he is paying back right and he was in uh, Savannah today, held a press conference, and um, was just saying, we're here to help. You know, nothing more, just to help. Mm -hmm. uh, it, 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 it's, it's what a, you know, we, it, he's a New York governor with a New York attitude. Mm -hmm. And I think that's what has taken the whole thing. You got to love that. You know, you know but back, think back uh, eight years ago, 12 years ago, when Rudy Giuliani was like the shit. I mean, that guy was unbelievable what he did. And he turned into a raving lunatic. Yeah. And I don't know what happened to that man. <laughs> uh, he, was, he was Rudy Giuliani. He always was a crook. You know, okay. he, he and his, uh, his police commissioner, Bernard Carrick, who, who went to, he went to jail. Going and to jail. Giuliani should have been right behind him. Really? Uh, yeah. Yeah, they were real crooks. Uh, but nevertheless, you but know, his he did, when, was... when I never liked Giuliani, but when I saw the way he was handling 9-11, I said, that's the way an executive handles something. They are okay. there. They talk to the public every day. They calm them down. They tell them what's going on. You get them to believe you so that when, a, when you say something, they will listen. And that's what Cuomo's doing. I mean, Cuomo's doing the same thing. We listen to him every day to get straight information. And if it's a bad day, he's going to tell you it's a bad day. Mm -hmm. He's not he going to sugarcoat the whole He became my favorite TV show in March, April, and May. Oh, he's still <laughs> my favorite TV show whenever he's on. I mean, yeah. we watched him uh, today at the airport, and then we watched him again today when he was in Savannah just to hear him talk. Yeah. You know? Um, uh, but. You know, um, uh, and he, you know he he would be a perfect running mate, of course, for Biden. But more than that, he he'd be a perfect candidate if they could draft him. Well, whoever no. Biden picks better be uh, you know better be somebody good because well they're talking about Elizabeth Warren, and I think that's a bad idea. I do. I agree. I think she's. Um, I, you know, at seventy eight, you know, no offense, Alex, but you just never know. <laughs> you never know. I'll tell you something. I've said that if you really want to have a, uh, a, a good candidate to be your vice president, I think the choice should be the mayor of Atlanta. This woman looks great, talks great, is tough, 
You know, she has all the things. And when you're running for president, really what you need is somebody out on the, on the stoop as well, uh, going to the cities you haven't got time to get to, you know. Sure. Uh, and she, she is a, she's tough. You know, she's, she's standing up against the governor of, of, uh, of Georgia. I just don't know what he's waiting for in making this pick, right? Um, especially I mean, if it's going to be an African-American woman. I would have done it during the protests. Well, he, the trouble is with Bernie Sanders at a debate, he, he painted himself into a corner by saying, I'm going to choose a woman. Yeah. Or, or I think Bernie Sanders said, are you going to choose a woman? And but he's he went, doing yes, fine. Of course I am. You know. you know, but Biden's in his basement. He's doing fine letting Trump self-destruct. But the, the, the VP is the bulldog, right, who's out there every day on TV talking about what Trump's doing. And I don't care if it's Kamala Harris or Elizabeth Warren or Val Demings. They can all do that now. And yeah. I, think should, I don't think he's going to pick someone until the convention, which I think is a big mistake. Well, I, 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 I don't know. How many of you out there uh, you uh, you out there, there are three of us here. Uh, <laughs> how many of you, when you vote, say, well, I'm voting for Biden because he has a good vice presidential candidate? Well, Never, only no, you don't do that. vote for him regardless, but this time it really does matter, right? Because he yeah. ain't going to be a two-term president, right? No, no. On the other hand, um, I think four years from now, we're going to see Cuomo be elected president. I think, he, you know... Let's face it, I said, I said about Trump, I said where he was stupid with this whole coronavirus thing is, this was his audition. Yes. You know, this was him auditioning for the part for a second time. And he didn't realize that, you know, that, that he, he, well, he doesn't have the ability to do it. Okay, let's just be honest. I, I, you if know, there was a crisis, it would unravel with this guy, right? He's yes. incapable of dealing with anything that's not right. just about him. Well, yeah, I mean, how many of you think that he really wanted to be president of the United States or he was just doing this so he could uh, take the money that was left over and put it in his pocket and then go start a, uh, a TV network, TV news network? Yeah. Huh. That, that was his whole game, you know, and then it's kind of like the I often describe the last election like being the producers, you know. <laughs> <laughs> what happens if we do everything wrong? Yeah. There's no way they're going to come ask for the money right. because we 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 had a flaw, right? Yeah. And then they're sitting there in the bar. Where did we go right? <laughs> yeah, where did you go right? Know? And I'm sure there was a point at which he looked at somebody and said, "Where did we go right? This wasn't the game plan." Yeah, he had a pretty good life going there, and I think Melania thinks the same thing. She's like, "Oh shit, yeah. <laughs> you know." Yeah. We were doing okay up in our little gold. How long do you think that marriage is going to last after he's no longer president? Not long. I don't think it's, yeah. I bet she's being paid money to stay. I, I, would, I would agree with that. I'm sure she's sleeping in the Lincoln bedroom. <laughs> oh, I'm sure she's not sleeping with that. Without guy. Lincoln, yeah. <laughs> Without <laughs> Lincoln. <laughs> One hopes when he's out that the, the brand just plummets, right? Yeah. Who's going to go stay at a Trump property? Yeah. After this? Oh, Trump has ruined his whole business. Yeah. Yeah. You know, I mean, I have friends who lived in a Trump apartment building. He had a, owned a apartment in a yeah. Trump apartment building on the, on the, on the West side. And uh, they all voted to have the name taken off the building, which they did because they felt that because they own those apartments mm. that lowered the property value. Yep. Yeah. Yep. Yeah. So he no longer in Trump City has his name, I think, anywhere. Uh, yeah, he's ruined his family name for for most of eternity. I'm guessing at this point. Well, yeah, but then again, the family name wasn't that lauded. You know, Fred right, Trump right. was considered pretty much of an asshole uh, and not liked by very many people. He was a slumlord. Mm -hmm. You know, and then his son was considered like, you know, the idiot son who just built one building. The fact yeah. is that every other building that's ever been built that has his name on it, he never put any money into or built. He, he licenses out his name. Uh. And so if his name ain't worth shit, he's not going to be able to license his name out any longer on those properties. You, and you know that behind the scenes, his idiot son... Donald Jr. or whatever is not running the business. You know, Dad is is stepping in there at every at every chance he can get. Well, my question is, what business? 
Yeah, what business? You know, what I, business? I, what I think is. my theory is the reason he doesn't want his tax res, uh, tax taxes to be seen is because we'll find out that he's not as wealthy as he claims he is. Absolutely. Sure. Absolutely. Yeah. Sure. We'll see that he gives nothing to charity. Yeah, and yep. that's not nearly as rich as he claims to be. Yeah, I agree. Or, or he doesn't give to charity because he doesn't have the money to give to charity. <laughs> exactly. I mean, I, I don't, don't think huh? I don't think he's got any empathy to give money to anybody anyway. To be honest with you. <laughs> well, I don't think I don't think he knows how to deal with even the common man. I mean, I can't believe you know all these these uh, what do you call it uh, rednecks. <laughs> that are his followers that he would even spend a moment with any of them. yeah that's the funny part right you know that he really think cow to you huh <laughs> you know like do you really think he's on your side what's yeah, wrong with on you? your side you know uh, never was on your side uh you know when he gives a tax rebate you gotta have paid taxes first to get a rebate you know he's not on your side um, so, I mean, it, it, you know, it, 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 but that kind of stupidity is what got him elected. That and the, well, you know, we've always had these, uh, the, we've always had this notion that it would be wonderful to have a president who wasn't part of the problem. It wasn't part of Washington, wasn't part of beltway politics and whatever. Well, we found out. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. You know? And now the pendulum swings the other way. Yeah. Yep. And I can't believe I me. Mean, I, quite frankly, I mean, you are going to have to fumigate the White House. <laughs> what he's done to, you know, even the furniture looks terrible. You know. Huh. So I mean, yeah, well, the first thing they'll do is put up the Obama portrait, right? He he refuses to put that up. Oh really? Yeah. There's a portrait done of every prior president and then it's traditionally hung up and there's a ceremony and in trump's case that portrait is still laying around and he refuses to put it up and you know the only reason he hates uh trump i mean obama is because of that correspondence dinner the dinner you know uh, if i could do like back to the future and go back into the past and be at that correspondence dinner and be sitting next to Obama, I would whisper to him, don't say anything bad about Trump. <laughs> <laughs> because what that did was come back to bite America in the ass, not yeah. Obama. I mean, uh, Obama had to do it, right? The guy was going out as oh, his citizenship and, you know, his <laughs> Yeah, yeah. And I mean, you know, and that thing is meant to be jokes and stuff like that. And, but Trump doesn't like to be laughed at. Right, he hasn't mm -hmm. had it. You know, we haven't had a correspondence dinner. Yeah, right. yeah. he should have. He should never gone to the correspondence dinner. But yeah, wasn't, I, wasn't talked the, I talked to the driver of his limo and say, "Get him lost." <laughs> <laughs> wasn't there a uh, like an MTV roast of Trump? You know, ten years ago or eight or whatever. Yeah. I remember watching bits and pieces of it, and he looked so uncomfortable. You know. Because they were saying that. some pretty nasty shit about him. Yeah, I remember so, Gilbert Godfrey is really going at it. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. So I mean, I don't, I, I don't, I never have quite, uh, you know, this, this has been a just a horrible four years. And I'm, I'm 80. You know, how much longer am I going to live? Did I have to live four of those with this yutz as president of the United <laughs> States? You know. Uh, uh, yeah. Yeah, and I hope I don't have to live another four. I'm going to be like Ruth Gator Ginsburg. I ain't going till he's gone. There you go. <laughs> I know. I we we need to send her vitamins and shit to make sure yeah. she's um, around for a while. I mean, you got to really hand it to her. I, I feel her. sorry for her because you know she's been great. She's been terrific. She's she's had a great lauded career as a as a jurist, and then winds up on the Supreme Court at some point in her life. And a uh, very deserving woman, very competent woman, and now deserves in her twilight years to spend those reflecting on stuff, not having to have to go to work every day, not having to do a job. Uh, but unfortunately, because of this guy becoming president, she hasn't been able to quit. Yep. And she's probably going to die. If, if, God forbid, if God forbid she dies, um, if, 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 can, we, can we block 
he can't appoint someone before the next election. Can he? Well, yeah. we could use the we could use the excuse the Republicans used with Obama. Right. You know, Obama they, they control the Senate. I mean, you know, that's the problem. Yeah. Well, they control yeah. the Senate, but I, I think the Congress also has to approve. No, I think it's a Senate confirmation. It's, it's, it's all Senate confirmation. But so. it could be. But they could probably kick the process beyond November. I yeah, mean. yeah. They, they can. They can do something. Yeah. This and now stage the question. My, la my last question is: We got about four minutes left here. What happens with the with the senatorial races and the congressional races? Do you think that Trump has done enough damage that it's going to damage those? Yes. Hope yeah. so. Yeah. I mean, what's yeah. going to happen to somebody like? Uh, uh, what, Mitch McConnell, is it? There's Susan many? Collins. Susan Collins, I think, is gone. McConnell, you gone. Really hope. Yeah. You got, that'll be a close one, but you got to hope he goes. Yeah, but, but that would be nice if he went. Uh, the Congress, you think we're going to hold on to the Congress? Okay, I think so. Yes. Yeah. So we could actually wind up handing Biden a free pass for four years. That anything oh, he wants to pass, stuff. he can get passed. Yeah. So, yeah. He's well, going to need it. <laughs> huh? Oh, listen, to begin with, he's going to get writer's cramp from all the executive orders he's going to have to sign reversing the stuff Trump did. Yeah. Well, yeah. it won't take him 15 minutes to sign it with that big fucking signature. That guy. <laughs> <laughs> Don't you love that signature? It looks <laughs> like when he signs it, it looks like an EKG, doesn't it? Yeah, yeah it does. <laughs> yeah, it does. It's is there a single, a single redeemable quality <laughs> that I can find? A, a, a redeemable quality of Donald Trump? One, one thing. He keeps McDonald's in business? <laughs> there you go. We, we never liked him here in New York. No, we never liked him here. Yeah. Uh, he was always considered kind of a blowhard. And, always you know, the vulgar. And, you know, he was the playboy and all of that. You know, and you never considered this guy that he was ever going to become president of the United States. Come on. that You'd write a movie about that as a joke, you know, as a science fiction film about the TV star who got elected president. You know, um, you, you could make a list of things he's, he's fucked up as long as my arms and legs. But the thing that bothered me the most is a petty thing, but it just drives me crazy, yeah. is when they learned that he dug into the Trump organization funds to pay Barron's $11 Boy Scout dues. <laughs> I thought to myself, give me a break. Wow. You know, you can't dig in your fucking pocket for <laughs> 11 bucks. Well, Even you know, it's an investment on the part of the, it's an investment on part of the corporation. Yeah, I suppose. Yeah. Oh, See, brother. Well, anyway, you know, it's been, actually, I really like this because it's just like a really intelligent conversation that we've had here. And I notice everybody is above a certain age. <laughs> you know? So, um, speaking of age, I turned I turned sixty on Thursday. So, did you really? Oh, I will. Yeah, this Thursday come You're out. Twenty sure. years younger than I am. How old are you, Robert? Seventy in a month. Seventy wow. in a month. So, ten years difference. And Steve, sixty-three. 63. Oh, you're a bunch of kids. I'm just. I'm, I'm the. I'm the kid here. What the fuck? Yeah. No. Uh, yeah, you are Bed, the kid. Bedtime. Yeah. 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 And I'm the. Uh, I'm grandpa. Yeah. Fearless leader. Oh, that's disgusting. Hey, listen, guys. Maybe we'll do this again next week. Just keep an eye on my Facebook page to see if we do. Yeah. No, and, I wasn't suspecting it today because I was expecting. It. I think it's. I thought it was usually Mondays that you do this. So. This is Monday. This is Monday. This is Monday. <laughs> <laughs> see, see, you've got the wow. code. You've got. Jesus. By the way, before you go, go online and try and find the aptitude, the uh, uh, acuity test. I saw that it. Trump took. I, I took. It. I looked at it. it. So so easy. I you oh, know okay. I went. I thought maybe I would screw up a little bit. You know, like say got, five. Say five words. It got tougher yeah. at the end. What? <laughs> you know, take a hundred and then minus seven and figure out how many jump that much. Yeah. I'm sorry. I did it okay. I got a, I got a, a, a hundred percent. Oh, well, you're a smart guy, Alex. Yeah. Well, I'm as smart as Donald Trump. I know that. <laughs> <laughs> but that isn't much to be smart as. A very high uh, anyway, thanks to Lynn. An honor thanks to share time. And Barb made a quick appearance in the background. Yeah, she's uh, here. Say hi. <laughs> 
There she is. Hi, hi, Barb. Uh, thanks to Robert and Natali, and thanks to Steve Bender. Always a pleasure. Oh, we'll thanks, Alex. Thank we'll you, see Alex. You all soon. Okay. Be okay. well. Bye, bye bye. And thanks to everybody who was uh, has joined us here, uh, watching this, and uh, we'll kind of call it uh, uh, quits. All right. Thanks, everybody. See ya. Bye -bye.